Hello, this is Eric Min, CEO of Zwift. Welcome to the world of Zwift. Well, hello and welcome to the world of Zwift, the show for those looking to squeeze every last morsel out of their workouts, their rides and their races. And to honour that, here is what we've got coming up on the show this week. First off, expert coach Shane Gaffney gives us the lowdown on the latest workout of the week. It's a battle of the gels in the feed zone. It's monster time in A to Zwift. We take a look at the highlights from week four of the ZRL. ZCL commentator and my favourite Kiwi on the planet, Anna Russell, finds out the secret behind DPAC Elite's domination of the community leagues. And Zwift veteran Nathan Guerra shows us how to take on Richmond's cobble climbs. But first, if you're a fan of the show, and even if you're not, then please hit like, leave us a comment and click this button below to subscribe. And whilst you do that, I'm going to recite Pi until somebody stops me. Here we go. 3.14159265358979. Seven, nine, three, two, three. Pi is forever. They're never going to stop me. Nine, three, two, three, eight, four, six, two, six, four, three, three, eight, three, two, seven. Nine, five, oh, two, eight, eight, four, one. Let's take a look at what's been happening in the rest of the Zwift universe this week. Ineos Grenadiers were all over Zwift on Saturday as they led thousands of riders on a series of 10 one hour rides. The hugely popular Vox Women's Tour will be running for the third time starting on the 5th of May. You're in for a hard-hitting four-stage tour and social recovery ride based on pro training regimes. Check out the link below right now to find out more. And Giant Crit Crushers is back Thursday the 6th. Yes, it's the race series for pros and beginners alike. Two races a week, four weeks in total, each less than 15 minutes long. Watch this space because we'll soon be catching up with Zwifters around the world who are taking part. And talking of Crit Crushers, last week, cycling GK Ben Foster gave us a tour around his Zwift pain cave. Legend has it that he races in the wrong category, but who am I to say? Check it out in the link below to decide for yourself. Now, in recent months, badge hunting has been put firmly back on the agenda, not least by Le Keep Provence and Zwift Insider, each running badge hunting series. So we thought, why not team up with the many great community groups, running unique rides to help more Zwifters with their badge hunting missions. Between May the 3rd and May 16th, we're teaming up with Dirt, BZR and Swedish Zwift riders, among others, to help you pick up some of the badges that you're missing. And at the same time, perhaps find your new favourite group ride. Click on the link below for more information. Expert coach Shane Gaffney is the man behind Workout of the Week. And lucky for us, he's going to be dropping in each episode to give us a quick guide to each workout, starting with today. All right, workout for this week is called Sevens. After a warm up, we head into a classic microburst style workout consisting of 30 seconds hard and 30 seconds easy. You guessed it, seven times. This type of workout is great for stimulating your VO2 max or the maximum rate your body can use oxygen. Improving your body's ability to utilize oxygen will help with a myriad of things, but most importantly, it will increase your aerobic ceiling and increase your ability to generate higher power for three to eight minutes. Why three to eight minutes? Because the more fit you are, typically the higher you can maintain your power at VO2 max. Now we all know that familiar feeling, you're about to bonk, so you run to the kitchen and gulp down the first gel you find, but what was it? Was that bacon? Was it blueberry? Was it Battenberg? Or as I like to call it, Battenborg. Well, lucky for you, I'm here to try out all those weird and quite frankly wonderful gels so you don't have to in a little game. I like to call, what the gel? Mm -mm. Ah, it's one of those little stubby pouches. I shall remove the top of it. Take a little load. What flavor is that? Oh, it's claggy, but then all gels are claggy. It's worth pointing out at this moment, I'm not the world's biggest fan of gels. Okay, that's got a coffee vibe. That's definitely got a coffee vibe. Want a little bit more? I'm saying that is cafe creme. What are we saying? Cafe creme, is that correct? Toasted marshmallow. Okay. Digging it. If you're going to get the OJ Borge gel rating, I'm going to give that. It's not bad. Very sweet. I won't want to do more than one. I'm going to give that a six and a half out of ten. Time for gel number two. Right. 
Remove the, the top. Ugh, sticky. Little first little nip. Ooh. Oh my god. Oh, that's like they harness the <laughs> donkey. Oh my god. I'll do a little more just for the, the science. It's got a, like a limey kick to it, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say that's a cocktail one. I'm gonna say the makers of this gel oh, have gone for a cocktail vibe. It is a sex on the beach. Rhubarb and custard, annoyingly, I actually own these gels at home. So rhubarb and custard, let's, um, let's just put that back where it came from. Time for gel number three, the final gel in What The Gel. Here we go. Ugh! What is that? Is that soap? That literally tastes, you know when you accidentally you go to like put something in the dishwasher and you get it on your hands and you lick it? That tastes like dishwasher powder. So I'm gonna say, is it non-biological, non-biological uh, dishwasher tablet? What? Coca-Cola? Anyway, we'll dispose of that one in the same way. Ah, that was what the gel. If you've got any weird and wonderful flavors that you wanted to try but don't want to, need a, a test, test subject, well then I'm your man. Stick it in the comments below and I will do it on a future episode of What The Gel. Got any water? Or maybe a host pipe? Or a new mouth? That'd be lovely. On our National Day of Remembrance in Australia and New Zealand, we took our friendly rivalry and our best banter to the shores of Watopia. Hey Aussies, bring your A-game. The Kiwis, we're coming for ya. If you say you're gonna beat the Aussies, we say, ha ha, as if. In this traditional Grand Fondo, riders could choose a long or short course. Off we go. This is going to go off like a frog in a sock. We had more high-ranking riders in the mix too. Former Olympic champion Graham Brown, rising star Ollie Jones, and Sharon Yaxley. Bunch of Kiwis ahead. Let's beat them. Aussie Cameron Jose was first to cross the finish line on the short course of Watopia's waistband. Coming through the volcano. Back on the long course, Kiwi Ollie Jones set the fastest time on the volcano after party. But in total, it was Team Australia who clocked up the most kilometres and reigned supreme. See you next year. Stay with us on the world of Zwift. On the way, we have highlights from week four of the ZRL. It's the five T's, totally time trial team time. That's the wrong order, but you know what I mean. Why is for Yeti, whose existence we are at Zwift headquarters can neither confirm nor deny. Take a ride up the Alpe de Zwift. While you suffer up these steep inclines, remember that on these mountain roads, you are always being watched. So when the snow begins to pile up alongside the road, keep a lookout for a mysterious monster appearing out of the mist. Now, it was an epic fourth week of the ZRL. That's epic with a capital E, P, I, and C. So let's take a look at the women's highlights. A round, may I say, little spoiler alert, that ended with four teams tied at the top of the table. Week four of season three of the Zwift Racing League. We're on to Greatest London Flat. 31 kilometers, 164 meters of elevation. Only three riders at the moment for TFC. Saris looking very, very good. That's a pretty quick time. Bobby Starr, second at 158. Quicker at the moment than high now. That's fascinating. At the first intermediate check, the women in red are where they are used to being on top. Team Swedish Zwifters. Saris and the Pro's Closet are going to catch Beast Mode powered by Rose. It's still very close at the top. Team Turbo, five riders strong. This is a superb performance. Movistar down to three riders. This team are flying. They've actually passed two squads out on the road. 
Heiner Racing Team really did pull out at the end. First place, 42-02. Movistar E-Team there tied on time with Team 2024. One of the best and closest team time trials I think we've seen. Incredible race in there to see how we ended up with four teams all tied at the top of the table. And watching the pain they were all in, sort of glad I missed it. My time slot for my race clashed with my co-coms with Nathan Guerra and the ZCL. So sort of glad I missed it, seeing how much Greatest London Flat is not flat. Anyway, we have another race to show you, and that is the men's. Week four, the men's race, Dutch e-racing. We have four teams within two tenths of a second. And this is a really, really strong example of how to ride in a unit. Saris and the Pro's Closet are the quickest. Well, look at this. Saris and the Pro's Closet currently leading after split number one at the mall. Callas Esports on the screen, less than one second behind. The first 10 teams after seven and a half Ks separated by only 14 seconds. Canyon Esports, remember they won on this course last year, so they know it very well. Beast mode, solid performance here by the newly promoted team from the community division. Saris have got restart in the crosshairs. Callas Esports have taken it 38-41 is their time. Saris and the Pros Closet in second with a 38-56. Canyon Esports in third with a 38-57. Callas is one of the longest standing teams in esports. This has got to go down as the biggest win in their team's history. I'm really, really happy for the Norwegian squad. They deserved it. Now, one person who watches more ZRL racing than most is ZCL commentator Anna Russell. She's here chatting with Sam Lindsay and David Pacheo from Deepak Elite, who are top of the tree in the Asia-Pacific time zone, to talk about their ongoing success. Thanks for that intro, OJ. I'm super excited to be here with the team from DPAC, well, two of the team. We've got uh, Sam Lindsay and also David here, team manager and racer. Do you guys want to give a bit of background about yourselves? Sam, we'll start with you. Yeah, cool. Hey everyone, my name's Sam and I'm a racer on Team DPAC. I've been riding Zwift now for I think about three and a half years or so and just uh, love racing with the team. David. My name is uh, David Pacheco. Uh, I'm the creator and team manager of Team DPAC Elite. I've been racing on Zwift for almost four years now. I always had this dream to create my own team. So I also took the opportunity to advertise this software project I created. So it, it's like the, the main title sponsor of the team. Sam, what's the secret to your success? What do you think it is about your team that you know sees you coming out on top across both team time trial formats, but also the scratch racing? With our team, we've got like a really good core group of guys that are all not only good at riding bikes but we're good mates as well we can get along super well when we're chatting on discord even though we're all from different parts of the world we can enjoy each other's successes as well i was gunning for you in the playoffs for the prem division but it looks like you guys didn't quite make it is that the ambition heading into season three or where do you see this team going it has always been the goal to to try to reach the the top races the premier league Unfortunately, in the, in the in the playoffs, things didn't work out very well for us. Right. So, uh, going for that uh, next premier playoff season three. Yes, hopefully so. That That's looks our good. goal at the moment. And <laughs> Sam, we'll go back to you. Uh, you're a Kiwi, but I think you're living in Aussie. What got you yeah, into Swift, fine. and what sort of attracted you to the DPAC team? I got into Zwift, I think it was 2018. I used to ride on the road a lot and do a lot of racing, kind of had a bit of a break after getting a little bit sick of it, I suppose. And then it was kind of Zwift that got me back into um, training again and, and racing. Um, and, and it's just kind of grown from there. You kind of get that, you get that drive to want to do the races and there's, they're on all the time. So it uh, makes it super fun. And then I suppose with the the team, 
I got approached by David. It was about a, a year ago now, I suppose. He put forward what he was trying to do and it was sort of everything I was looking for in riding for a team because I wanted something that had a good social atmosphere where there was like a bunch of guys that were just sort of racing more for the the fun of it and um and just there to enjoy it there's not like you know the pressure's there to perform but the pressure's more from ourselves as well so i kind of think that the, the team atmosphere was a, a real big draw draw card for me and david back to you what do you think the zwift racing league has done for deepak the team is it gone from strength to strength is it uh doing what you want for the visibility of the brand that's obviously sponsoring the team you know how have you found the racing league yeah, I think it has been uh, an awesome, an awesome league so far. It was a very good initiative. It's definitely something more organized than this type of races. The, the mix between the TTTs and the points races are very good for, in terms of fun for for the race because of all the tactics and different uh, scenarios that that there can be in the races. So that was definitely a positive thing, uh, and especially the fact that there is the um, uh, sort of. Uh, uh, different uh, levels where, where you can move up or down in the division and now it's uh, it's a bit more open so everybody knows what's what they have to do to move up yeah fantastic well i mean you guys are really spicing it up it's very enjoyable to commentate your team thanks for your time and uh good luck for the rest of the season you know sam every time you win i have to sing the national anthem so uh Get out there and win some races for the Kiwis. But thanks, guys, and good luck uh, for the rest of the racing in APEC. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Anna. Time to practice those pain faces. Go. Ooh, scary. Because week five's route is a points race on the cobble climbs of Richmond. And who better to show us how it's done than Zwift veteran Nathan Guerra. And a little factoid for you. Did you know that Nathan Guerra is a literal translation of Wattage Cottage in Spanish? True fact. What's up, everybody? Nathan Garrett here. We are on a rider recon for the cobbled climbs out on the Richmond course. This course is going to have a lot of climbing out here today. We're talking 15 total climbs, five laps, three climbs per lap, 126 meters of climbing each lap. That's 413 feet. You're gonna want to reserve energy and follow wheels early on. And then from there, you're gonna want second to last lap. Last lap, it's gonna be more about 23rd Street or Libby Hill getting away and continuing on. Right now we're coming up to Libby Hill. Find your position before you hit this left-hand turn here. You need to be mid-pack or more from there. Feather power-ups, arrow power-ups. This right here, this second right-hand turn, this is the moment, because it's about 10 to 15 to the line. Full gas, grab the points, pause the brake. Over the top of Libby Hill, it flattens out for about a minute. We descend extremely intensely. Now, this descent is so tricky. You wanna be amongst the riders and then take the speed to the front that you're gaining from them. From here, after you do this dive into the flat, that's when you start ramping through the pack and carry the speed with the roll through the moment you hit this uphill sharp punch. Essentially, this is getting over the top of this as fast as you possibly can because the quicker it's over, the less time you're spending at VO2 max. So final climb, bottom of Governor Street, longer climb, the initial kick, only 5% uphill gradient. So through this section right here, really it's about following wheels. It isn't until we hit this 10%, you really are able to around this corner, maybe try and find a little bit of a gap. The attacks that usually win over the top of governors are either at about the halfway, the three-fourths mark, or a final attack when everyone lets up at the top. Now, 300 meters to the line, it's all about setting up right. Somebody will most likely start going. Make sure you're on that wheel. Really, sprinting from 250 is where it's at. All in from here. Done. If your hands are in the air and do it racing enough, you guys got done. Woo. Superhuman. 15 climbs, all punchy. One of the most intense courses you'll ever find on Zwift.
So that's it for another World of Zwift. It has been a magical journey. Thank you for taking it with us. If you do like the show, leave us a comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, ride on! 80 Star Wipe. Thank you.